63,700 would be uh, one of the most important confirmation levels now for Bitcoin over the coming weeks as we lead into The fear is increasing in the Bitcoin and crypto markets. This is the assessment of our guest, seasoned trader Jason Pizzino, as he analyzes the Bitcoin price action with focus on the near to midterm key levels. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. All right, guys, let's kick it off with the fear and greed index, we've finally hit fear and almost extreme fear yesterday when the crypto fear and, in fear and greed index finally kick-started yet again. It's at 26. So this is the lowest level we have seen now throughout this entire cycle coming all the way out of the FTX crash. The FTX crash got it down to 20 through 20 to 25. So it was an extreme fear. And then as Bitcoin rose out of December 2022, we did not see levels this low. So we hadn't seen fear in the market at these levels. This led my theory of this cycle being one of the least feared bull markets until we were to see any sort of further correction or any sort of further market sentiment correction. And over the weekend, it looks like we've got just that. We've got a very significant correction down to 26 on the reading. As I said, bringing us all the way back to the FTX crash. So I think that is a pretty good sign that we are somewhere around the low, if not have already seen the low. So as I said in the intro, I'm looking at two scenarios here, a potential V-shaped recovery. We could look at it as a slow grind up as well. Either way, you've got a bull scenario and a bear scenario, basically a downside. But it seems like we are on the cusp of rounding this low, which is really important now if you still find yourself in a whole basket of cryptocurrencies, different altcoins that might not be getting the gains that they should. And I'll share that with you at the end of the video. Some of these altcoins that are down from April. So let's have a look at some of the, the technicals here on BTC. We had a beautiful day down on the Friday bar. Big volume, some of the highest volume that the market has seen going all the way back to the May low and also the lows that came in just after the all-time high, which also showed up with our three-day down signal that told us that there was a very high chance that the market would be down for quite a considerable amount of time, much longer than the majority were expecting. So we've got that now. We're at 27.5% uh, down. And as I talked about in the previous video, a 53K crash, it was basically bracing for some sort of uh, drop into this zone here and it seems like we got very close to it you can see right there the low is just slightly above those levels the the point that i made in the last video is it was i thought it was pretty important that this area had some sort of clean out in terms of a price range there so as i'm saying i don't know if this is the exact low there are signs that it is around the low or could be the low but as long as we or as long as the market tests this price range, because this is essentially the extreme emotion and the euphoria. And from what I've seen with, with my analysis over my experience, is that you typically want to see a lot of this, if not all of it, uh, this euphoria get wiped out of the market before it can continue on. It seems like a logical thing that you want to see the weak hands, those who are just buying up because they're they're... Uh, greedy at the peak get wiped out so that you can form another solid base and right now as I've said I think we're on that that path at the moment now on top of that we start to look at some of the more uh, technical structures here with the price you can see we've got this top to this low projected from the tops that came in in May and June and so the reason for that is you want to measure out the moves to the downside are they roughly equal or are they extending? If they're extending, that means you're starting to get a little bit more uh, uh, selling going on that is going to push the market further or could push the market further. Whereas what we've seen, you can see this number right across the bottom here at around 54,800, uh, that we got an almost exact repeat of 
that entire range. So that is a good thing. That's a healthy balance here, a nice healthy correction. So what we want to see from this point, and that leads us into the, the, the next point about the three day rule, right? Is that from here, doesn't have to happen, but a three day up would be a really nice sign to show that this is most likely, not guaranteed, but most likely the low. Check out May 1st. You had this day, one, two, three green days, uh, and three higher highs, higher lows, that is, more importantly, not just green or red, but higher highs, higher lows, and that held that low up for a very long time. So this happened to be a very, very important low, and right now we've got to close above that low, which is also important. Now we want to see multiple days that close above it, and you want to hopefully see the three days up, and then we can start to look at some other price ranges up here, which I'll, I'll get to in a moment. But so far, that signal worked well at the low. It does not uh, mean anything if it's within a move. Some of the comments over the last couple of days was we got three days down here, lower highs, lower lows, but that's you're looking for it at a significant turn. This is coming into the turn. You want to see it out of a turn, so from a low up, or like we saw from the top, which helped us on the channel here, call that that was going to be probably some rough times. You guys remember from a few months ago, me talking about this sort of thing here. If you are new to the channel after this period, uh, you can go back and check those videos out. It was just part of the analysis, right? From that particular that point there, you see it from a very uh, important pivot point, then you get the three days down. There's nothing in between. It's literally the three days down. So we want to, it would be nice to see it now. We want to see it, but it'd be nice to see it as well because I can't tell you if it's going to happen. Let's just wait and see over the coming days whether we see a few more greens. So let's keep going with the, the bullish scenario here and we got the resistance levels overhead so the shorter term stuff here one day 58.7 uh, that's basically the 50 percent level through this just one day range which also lines up nicely with the low on the on june 24th so that's that's an important uh, price point now for btc to get some closes above in the short term then once we can overcome that the 58.7 the one week shows up here so one week 68 uh, sorry 63,700 comes together right here so that's the, the peak of this move here, that little swing top. And it's also the ranges from the top to the bottom. So right through that middle there, 63,700 would be uh, one of the most important confirmation levels now for Bitcoin over the coming weeks as we lead into the four to six month period underneath the old all time high. You've heard me say that heaps and heaps of times before, four to six months time frame underneath that high. So we're getting into that zone right now. Moving forward from here, the next price points, support and resistance, 67.2, that hasn't changed. That's right around uh, these levels here. They're 67.2, okay, so price above that. And then the one month price point, 72K, so right above these tops here. So hopefully it doesn't get rejected again, but uh, long way off from that point right now. They're the first couple of prices, 58.7, 3.7. So keep those written down, uh, provided this low stays intact. So to the downside, pretty straightforward. You got 56 and a half, which is still that May 1st low for now. Bitcoin basically faked out to the downside and has got some closes above. So that's a good sign. 50 to 53, basically we hit that now and we've um, tested this zone once. Do we need more tests? I'll let the market tell the story, but for now, one test is holding up. And then below that, you got 48 to 49, which was the ETF peak and also the lower uh, monthly swing top. So right around that level there. Now, this is looking pretty similar to the previous move uh, in 2023. You've got about six months in this range before it absolutely pumped out of that zone. If something like that was to happen again, it could be pretty significant moves to the upside for Bitcoin. Okay, I think altcoins need a little bit longer to rest, but in terms of, because at that time, 2022, altcoins were basically down through this entire period. So there's a lot of consolidation going on there for the stronger stuff, and then you had this pump out. Whereas now, they've had their pump out, that's for alts, and they might need a little bit longer. So this period of the six months from March, and then maybe two, three, six months from that period. I'll get to that in just a moment. But this is what's really, really interesting right now, where if you're looking at it from March of uh, 23 to let's just go to the peak here and move this over to the top. So you got that level 
and then you can see the market drop off. Next month would be like a, a small month here, so August potentially just climbing the price point back, and then maybe September, October, some sort of move to the upside leading to a, a breakout of the highs. Now, I am also wary of the election coming up, so I don't know how this is going to respond at that election time, whether it's going to need another month or so to get above it due to um, the election happening in November, and then we see the breakout like we saw in uh, 2020, you got the October move breaking out of the tops, but then in November after the election, that's when it started to test the old all-time high. So either way, I think we're going to see some fireworks in quarter four, but quarter three is this period now where it's recuperating and getting time to uh, break to this new fresh price. So four months down, looking pretty decent at the moment, similar sort of pattern to last time. Maybe we get another big pump out. It's happened before we go back to the previous cycles. You can go to 2016. There was about five to six months of consolidation, then a breakout, then another five to six months of consolidation, and then a breakout, and then you get shorter corrections, which basically fuels the greed even heavier. So like way more greed when you get these shorter corrections because people are so fearful of missing out because the corrections are so short that they just basically pile in and then you get this big snowball effect at the peak. Whereas now, I don't think there's too many people fearful of missing out, although this is probably one of the better times to be in, and we see that on altcoins as well. All right, so I've got altcoins, but let me just recap where we are in the overall cycle. We're in the winner's curse phase now. We are here. This is the macro cycle with uh, real estate prices and the economy. The final peak, that winner's curse phase, things ballooning. And it just doesn't go straight up for two years, as you can now see, or as we can now see from uh, from Bitcoin, is that yes, it can pump pretty hard for a very long time. Six months is decent, but you need to recuperate. You need to just to cool off for a moment there. So that's what I think we're doing here. Maybe we have a few of those pumps. I don't know if Bitcoin gets all the way to the end of the cycle, 2026 or 2027. I think 2025 is going to be a pretty interesting year for cryptos. So I'm not going to be holding into these things as the market dumps uh, over again, you know, turns over and then starts to fall back. But I think we still have this final move to the upside. Uh, and one last thing on the, uh, the Bitcoin chart here, it's working pretty well in with Michael's Elliott wave theory, the one, two, three, four into this final boom. And this has been a fantastic wipeout, especially with the market sentiment. So everything is still lining up relatively well. So macro cycle obviously intact. The stock markets are up new all-time highs here on the weekly, the daily, the closes, S&P 500, new all-time highs here on the NASDAQ. And you've got a nice wind up here for the Dow Jones. The uh, VIX is still in the bull market zone here, just grinding around. You've got low volatility. Everything is still on track here. Uh, you've got the emerging markets, India, new all-time high after new all-time high. This thing has just been pumping to the upside. You have the US dollar breaking back down into the weakness, the weak area that we've been looking at over the last few months. So a breakdown at the moment, uh, starting to pick up some speed. This will take months, if not years, to play out. I suspect lower prices for the US dollar, so some weakening there as well. And for your uh, other commodities here, gold, one of the highest weekly closes in history, the third highest here, nearly um, verging on $2,400. And silver closing out the week above the 50% level. So it's second highest close of this rally up and starting to tackle the collapse of 2011, to, uh, yeah, 2011 into 2012. So it looks like it's preparing for that commodities move to the upside. So that leads us on to altcoins and a look here at the short term and the long term for alts along with the strong and the weak stuff. Now, just a quick recap of the Bitcoin dominance. The dominance here, should this break out of the 50% level, you can see it's just been getting hammered down by the 50% here. A breakout here would destroy most alts, but not all alts. So that's the good news there. A break under here, you're going to see a little bit more of that money flowing to altcoins. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Jason Pizzino. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.